the heading is inverse functions and relations. We really are going to be focusing on the, uh, the functions, as you'll see why a little bit later. But uh, this whole idea of inverse functions is a really major idea. It's interesting for me, I'm teaching it to you now, because in the past, when we taught the extension one course, of which this is a part, because I know sometimes it kind of blurs in your head, like what's advanced, what's extension one? This is extension one. But in the past, in previous years, people learnt this topic much later, like a whole year later. So we had a whole lot of other stuff in our brains. Um, we're learning it much earlier, I think that's actually a good thing, because Inverse functions are actually things you've been dealing with for many years. We just haven't really gave it that fancy name. So by doing it now, we're going to understand better things we've been doing for a long time and we'll hopefully make sense of a few things. You're like, why do we do that? And we just, before we'd say, don't worry about it, we'll get to it later. Here we are at later, okay? Now, I want to introduce you or reintroduce you to probably the most famous inverse function you know about. Actually, if you have your calculator there, could you get it out, please? Because if you think back to year nine, you learnt trigonometry in right angled triangles like this. And for example, um, if you saw uh, something like this, right? Right angled triangle like this, and you can see I've got O and H labeling, what do they stand for? Opposite and hypotenuse. You know that that angle is related to these two sides with a particular function. We give it a name. That particular function is opposite and hypotenuse. Which one's that one? Sine. It's sine, right? So in this particular triangle, you can say, and you've got this button on your calculator, right? You can say sine of 30 degrees will give you half. opposite on hypotenuse. In this case, it's a half, right? But I'm just going to yeah. list it as that, right? So you can see what we're inputting is an angle, oh, right? You input an angle, and what do you get out? You get um, this ratio, like this divided by this, right? That's what you put in. That's what you get out, okay? But you fairly quickly learned, again, back like a couple of years ago, you fairly quickly learned you could also do this uh, in the opposite direction, right? You could also say, hey, if you know what the ratio is, you can find out what the angle is, right? So what you do on your calculator, right? You can see right above sine, right? Inverse. If you pressed shift, you would not get sine, you would get? Inverse sine. Yeah, inverse sine or sine inverse. And it's got a, um, it's got a little... Symbol like that, right? So if you say sine and we read that as inverse, right? We don't read that as, um, you know, when we did indices, right? If I gave you this, don't write this down. If I gave you this, just the number, you should say, oh, that's index laws, that's a quarter, right? But here, it just so happens we reuse the same. It's like in English how sometimes we have a really good word and we use it for more than one thing. We use this same notation, but it means something dramatically different. Here it's like undo what sine did. So if you put into your calculator sine inverse all a half, it will faithfully hand back to you 30, 30 degrees, right? So it gives you that, that angle, whatever it happens to be. So in other words, what we're doing here is we're changing perspective. It's the same thing. It's the same object. But from this perspective, I know what the angle is. I find out the ratio. Over here, I know what the ratio is. And I'm turning things on their head. I'm getting out an angle. Um, and your calculator will told you 30 degrees. Okay? Now, this, this sort of change in perspective is very important. It's why these are actually called inverse functions. Probably a word that you know which is related to this is when you turn something upside down, we call that, well, you invert it, right? Turn it, you're looking at it from the opposite way, right? So that's what these inverse functions do. They turn this thing literally, if you look at the angle and the ratio, ratio and angle, you're literally turning these upside down. And in fact, that's an important point. To go from a function to the inverse function, this is worth writing down, see this input and output, they swap. The input and the output, to go from a function, a real function, to its inverse, you just swap the input and output, which may happen to be a, a ratio or an angle, or they could be anything, right? So to think about what this means, algebraically, right? If you consider some function, f of x, right? For example, sine might be our f of x, right? The way to get the inverse, and we're going to use the same notation that you've seen from the inverse trig functions, right? So see that minus 1? I'm thinking of it meaning, it's my shorthand for saying inverse, right? So instead of writing f, I'm going to write f, and then I'm going to put up minus 1. So I read this as the inverse of f of x, right? So algebraically, what do we do? If you've got this and you, you want to get to the inverse, then you swap. That's what we just established, right? You swap the inputs and outputs. 
um, often the inputs are called X's and the outputs are called Y's, right? So case in point, come and have a look at these examples with me, right? These are very, very straightforward functions that we know how to deal with. If I want to take these functions and get an inverse out of them, so if I want to turn this guy into what's the inverse that sort of undoes that, you know? This guy will undo that. What's going to undo this, right? Well, I'm going to swap the inputs and outputs. I'm going to swap the x's and y's. So everything that I see here, I'm going to rewrite. But everywhere I see an x, I'll swap it for a y. Everywhere I saw a y, swap it for an x. So I'm going to get, instead of y equals, I'll have x equals 3y minus 1. Now, in theory, I'm done. That thing there is the inverse function of this. But usually when we write functions, we like y to be the subject. Like that's the old way we always write it, right? So let's just rearrange this just a teeny bit to make y the subject. What would you like me to do to both sides first? Subtract minus 3y. Uh, so if I, if I subtract the y, um, it's gonna, I'm going to have a minus 3y on this side. So it's kind of just like flopping back and forth. I'm sort of not really that much closer to having y by itself, is there something else I could do? I've got a couple of good options. Yeah, okay, if I add one, that's a little more helpful because then I'm like, oh, this thing which was here, it won't be there anymore. So I'm gonna add one to both sides, that gives me this. And there's only one last thing to do to get y by itself, I will divide by three, fantastic. So I'm gonna, I'll also switch sides at this point, so I'll write y equals, I'm gonna put a third at the front. Okay, so this guy here is the inverse of this one here, right? Now, one of the reasons why we add this extra notation, f and f inverse, is because you're like, well, y equals this, y equals that. I'm gonna have lots of y equals different things flying around, and I wanna distinguish between them, okay? So this y equals and this y equals are inverses of each other, okay? All right, how about this one? Can we do this one? If we wanna do the inverse of this, what's the first thing that I do? I wrote it, we wrote it down here. I'm going to? Yeah, I'm going to swap those x's and y's, right? So the very first line is, I'll write everything like it was, but instead of y equals, I'll have x, x equals y, y cubed plus two. plus two. Okay, again, I've started off with a nice, relatively simple one. What's the first thing I can do to get towards y being on its own, y being the subject? Yeah, Rasen. All right, we'll subtract two. That gives me this. And at this point, I've got y cubed. I don't want y cubed, I just want y. So what will I do to... Do the opposite of that. Yeah, I will take that. Say it again. Yeah, Justin, do you? Okay, yeah, it's, it's like the square root, but it's, it's cubed here, not squared, yeah? So it's the cube root, as Yashan pointed out. So I'm going to swap sides as well. I get this. Are you happy with that? Right? So this guy is the inverse function of this.